To win a world championship takes unrivaled commitment, a kind of fearlessness very few have. The ability to shut out the smack talk. You've got to want it like no one else. And when they come to take it away, that's when the true colours shine. Flying to the other side of the world to race motorcycles for money. I'm not going to take it easy. Do I own one? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes I just keep the receipts in my head, you know? From the UK to the Middle East and the long haul to the land down under, this has been a tough season. One to savour if the cards fall the right way. I'm willing to push myself as far as I need to. At the end of the day, when something's on the line like this, there are no lines that can't be crossed. So with that being said, it's showtime. Tonight's about the pride of winning an Aussie GP and crowning world champions. I want to be the first British World Supercross champion. I just want one of those gold medals. You know, I've, I've been dreaming about that for a long time. We're going for that. I won the World Supercross Championship in 2022, and for me to be able to go back to back would be huge. Winning is addicting, and I want to win. They're ready to bang bars one final time in 2023. This is the Boost Mobile WSX Grand Final. The transformation is complete. 7,000 tonnes of dirt, 500 tipper trucks worth in less than 48 hours have turned Marvel Stadium in Melbourne, the sporting capital of Australia, into a supercross track that is up there with the best internationally. And it's here that the 23 world champions will be decided tonight. Hi everybody, Greg Rustin, Grant Langston with you. Kristen Beat and Chad Reed are trackside for our WSX TV coverage too. Let's get straight into it. SX2. GP race one now. We take a look at some of the, the riders who will be in action for the first of our races in SX2. Revs rise. We're good to go. Underway at Marvel. They unleash them here. Remember, they're fighting for a world crown. Good couple of races to come and some experts on the floor and in the booth to bring you all the insights. Anstey on the 99 is the points leader. Yeah, but he didn't come out in front. There he is, third. Third at the moment. But Grant, you have to admit, this is a very physical track. As, as Ken Rocher was saying uh, after the qualifying, is that with the 90s, you have to be aggressive. You've got to put your wheel in there. Yeah. And Max Anstey is doing what he does best get himself, survive the first lap, and then go to work. Yeah, he's, he's in a great position right now because, you know, he's in the catbird seat, as we like to say. He's comfortable, he's got the pace, he's shown it all weekend that he's basically the fastest guy in this class. So this, no drama in the first turn, no crash in third place. Oh, Luke Clout in front of him, went for that double out of the turn and wasn't pretty, but barely got over it. But Luke Clout, coming off a high last night winning we saw the emotions on the podium a little bit of crying a little, he's been through a lot with injuries and now he's in a position to win as he looks up the inside well he's in a position to take the lead as well rusty mega ride here by luke cloud who starred Look on at friday night for cdr yamaha for one of the legends of the sport in australia craig deck let's go track side here's chad Guys, these two out front race last night. They have so much more. I think they're just in the rhythm. They hit the ground running. And uh, let's see if Cloudy can turn this 450 win last night into a 250 win tonight. He's come back from injury. It was, as the guys have detailed, there's some emotional scenes last night to win that final event. Uh, you know, a sport that's pretty much been dominated by the Americans. And, you know, RJ yourself is probably one of the original the legends of Supercross. And see to the outside, thinks about it. Got a great Go run the down the whoops. How, how good was that? He gets a great run on the outside, and that's the thing. He's used on the 450s. We saw Ken Roxy come to the inside and get up on top. But we have not seen the 250s do it until Max Asti did it on the outside. That's all important. The three is Chris Blows. He's down. That's a shame. A rider who is within striking distance in oh. points terms. Oh. Uh, of trying to finish on the world championship podium. He's fourth in the stand. Oh, look at this. No way. 
This could be detrimental to his championship. This could be huge for the championship. Chad. Yeah, guys, I'm just running down here. I saw it happen. He was actually off the track onto the start straight away and then caught it. Now it's on his foot peg. It's actually, I really want to help him, but I don't want to get in trouble here. <laughs> but what we're watching right now is Max Hasty. I'm so impressed with this young man because he came to America as a young man, didn't have the results that he wanted, but then he went, did GPs, and now he's starting to come back. And right now is the winner of this first heat. And just put a huge points gap on the rest of the field as well. Anstey now can basically, Rusty, put one hand on that trophy. You never want to get too overconfident, but he's holding it right now. Well, you, you, obviously we need to wait just in case of anything that the FIM might, might look at, but it is perfect, it would seem, for Max Anstey right now. Luke Clout, off the back of an awesome Friday night, gets home with a brilliant second place, and Carson Munford, who's had terrific speed all night in the lead-up to the start of our coverage, home in third. Anstey just perfect off the back of the Aussie title last night the Brit can almost taste the champagne in the SX2 class. SX2 race two of the night scheduled for six laps there he is on the 99 the Brit provisionally champion elect shall we say gates about to come down here at Marvel revs rise with the 250s we're underway oh what a start there perfect by Anstey yeah just dynamite got his head and shoulders in front of everyone but great to see McElrath and his team got that bike fixed sorted back to the start line and but he's battling in the pack and again just Anstey's night whole shot to Anstey and he now sits about trying to capitalize on it over Cole Thompson Nathan Crawford on the 199 Luke Cloud again having another good run he's just moved past McElrath up into third place so McElrath despite the drummers that's terrific work by that team to get him in a position to fight here and he is fighting tenaciously you know at the, at the end of the day if the championship's out of the window you want to go and race and win and finish on a high note right now he's probably got some built-up frustration he wants to go out show run why he has the number one plate and he's riding like it can he make hey while the sun shines as he tries to move forward there he is in the background kudos to rick Ware racing under pressure getting it done clout and thompson go at it that's Ooh. good for anstey who has 1.3 over this pairing cullen park on the 67 wilson todd is up in sixth place on the 20. yeah but out front just max anstey's just been just clinical all weekend long from practice from the australian series last night Faust's time to winning his heat races. Oh, look at the battle now for third and fourth. Baccarath up the inside. What a move. He's been lining that up for a couple laps now. And gets Luke Cloud. He has to look over his shoulder as he comes under pressure again. Awesome stuff. Gritting the teeth. McElrath, look at him. And this is not the first time that we've seen him do this. McElrath is in third place. Anstey with a couple of corners to go. Checkered flag's about to be waved. It'll be a victory by 5.5 seconds, and that should put the world title safely in his pocket. One to go later tonight, but Anstey wins two from two to start the SX2 evening. That is perfection. Look at him. He's pumped about it too. The only thing he did better than the first one was he got the whole shot this time. He, you know, he was out front, no, no, no roots, no tear-offs. And look at that nice whip over the finish line. You see that? That is just pure, just exuberation. He knows. He knows. <laughs> he hasn't been handed the medal yet. No, but that's right. He knows what's happened. And uh, let's, unreal. Let's take it. Let's take your track side. Here's Kristen. Max, you are now a FIM World Supercross champion. How does that sound? <sighs> All I can say is, Millie, we did it. Yeah, man, after, uh, after everything that we've been through, my, my wife and my little, little one are not here, and man, it's, uh, you know, a wise guy once told me it's the bad days that make the good days feel so good. And man, it's, uh, it's amazing to be the, the first British World Supercross Champion or, or the next British World Champion. Man, I've wanted one of these gold medals for a long time and all I can say is I love you guys. Wish you were here. Whoa, that's cool. This is, this is cool. I still got one more race. I got to go and refocus, but man, this is awesome. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, it's amazing. Congratulations, Max. He wanted to try and get it done.
before the final race of the evening. What a journey it's been for this guy. Anstey takes out race two from Cole Thompson. Shane McElrath with a, a real sense of purpose. He couldn't wrestle it away from Anstey, but that's a great ride to third place. Yeah, I mean, obviously race one was just terrible. As we have a look at the quick highlights there, you see they had the fans on the riders trying to cool them down. They're hot and sweaty after that first race, and then Anstey just perfect. It gets the whole shot. Look at this. Just times everything. The bike's staying in line. He's saving energy. No mistakes. And then, of course, there's McElrath trying to get up the inside. And the 99 puts the championship safely in the pocket. Max Anstey is pumped about it. So, just to recap those points, at the top end of the ladder, just five in it. Between Joey Savacci, the leader, and Ken Roxon, the defending champion, on the one. This first race for the Premier Class is scheduled for eight laps here. I want to say a big g'day to Pete Adderton and all the team from Boost Mobile too. Huge supporters of Supercross and motorsport generally in this country. Great to have them back as the naming rights partner of this event, and it's delivering in terms of entertainment. Away we go in WSX. First one of the night. They're away cleanly, which is good, through this first left-hander. It's the MCR. Look, Look at that, teammates. Oldenburg. Oldenburg on the 49, ahead of Vince Freezy, then Roxon. Yeah, teammates out front. Those MCR Hondas just getting out of the gate really good. Freezy gets through the clean. Will he, will he ride his teammate clean, or will he just go for it? Sabachi, Sabachi on the 17, ahead of Roxon. So those two that are battling, Sabachi's oh. had a good run down the back of the woods. Did you wow. see that? Ken Roxon got a two-for-one special right there, up the inside. Gets past Subaras and Sabachi. That's what he needed. Cedric Subaras is kind of in the middle of this title fight right now. He's not in it in points. Then look at this. Sabachi has to get him right now. As we look at the replay, there's that two for one special. And off camera, we're looking. And Sabachi, and oh, I thought he had Subaras. You see him coming to the picture right there. And Oxen. Good block pass right there from Kenny. Kenny is by Vince Freezy for second place. That's important. The Suzuki rider with the one. Now chasing down Mitchell Oldenburg. He's doing everything he can here, Ken Roxon. Oh, and Savachi in the background. Uh, he gets super ass. You see that in the background. There's a 17. He needed that really bad. He's got to get going. He's got to get back up with this front leading trio because this is not good for the points. If Kenny takes the win, and Joey cannot move forward, he will lose the points lead, and that'll be huge going into the next two mains. If you follow things like MotoGP, they use a very similar point score, so some a good haul of points coming up here for Ken Roxon, if he can clear Mitchell Oldenburg, knowing that Joey Savacci is back with his hands full in fourth place at the moment. Worst case at this point for, for Joey, if Ken wins this, he's got to get around those Honda teammates and limit the damage and hold on to that lead. But right now, it's not looking good. And Sabachi making minor mistakes there. Rocks a different approach to the whoops there. He gets a little bit closer. But Oldenburg, let's go. Let's go to Kristen as you note the championship standing. Sabachi by one at this stage. Kristen. Interestingly enough, Tony Alessi, Mitchell Oldenburg's team manager, told me his advice for Mitch this weekend was don't push so hard to be third. You make a mistake and end up 11. If you're a five, be a five. So right now I'm curious how Tony Alessi may be viewing this race, seeing as Mitchell Oldenburg is now in first. Kristen beat Chad Reed trackside for us. We'll keep those oh. updates coming. Roxon gets there. What a move down the inside. Roxon takes the lead. Kenny, just one of the best at just doing it nice and clean. No contact. Just impressive. Look, quick replay. Look at him. Dives to the inside. Oldenburg sees him. Has to stand the bike up to avoid contact. Kenny keeps it low and still able to come out of the turn and triple. Joey. Can he get a little more air here? Now he sneaks down the inside. That's a positive move from Joey Savacci. What he needs now is just kind of momentum to try and get a bit of confidence in his riding relative to Roxon. Here you go. Well, this was really good because the one thing he does do, he stand, stands up Freezy a little bit. Watch Freezy. He sees it coming. He stands the bike up. So Joey gets a bike length or two at the exit. So he doesn't have to protect the inside of the very next turn. He can now go and charge forward. I love that. Great performance from Joey Savacci. And look at the gap already as we come out of the replay that he's got on Vince Freezy. So 1.5.
as he sets sail, trying to chase Oldenburg. We need to keep an eye on those points with only a couple of laps left to go. He's up into third. That might make it pretty close between he and Rox. And this is nail-biting stuff for the WSX Grand Final. Still two races to come in the Premier Class. Check it out. They're deadlocked. Yeah, 147. Say, if they threw the check flag right now, they would be tied. The difference between first and third place is five points. 25 points for a win. 22 for second. Savacci's in third with 20. The Frenchman who's really well credentialed, but we are watching Ken Roxon on the one. Not long to go. Will open the account with a race win here. Has a little look over the shoulder. Who's behind Double me? Check. How far <laughs> behind me is Mitchell Oldenburg? Roxon greets the checkered flag. Perfect start. That's what he Ooh. needed to do. Oh, the background freeze. He almost just smashed the Varchi into the last turn. That was close. But Joey's going to be frustrated. He's looking down at his bike. I thought I someone had a puff of smoke coming off their motorcycle on that last lap and didn't see where it came from. But Savarchi had a really good long look down at his bike. Hopefully we can maybe get a little update on that one. But look at that. Number one doing what he does. Yeah, with Cheers. the candles Just lit up shit. in the background. Tremendous. We're about to take you trackside and we'll get some updates. But in a moment, uh, first, here's the results. Roxon from Mitchell Oldenburg. Joey Savachi. That was an important pass on Freezy and they fought all the way to the line. Whew. Here's the standing. So we up <laughs> look at it. Unbelievable. With two races left in the championship, they're deadlocked. Roxon versus Savachi. What happens here now? Stress oh. goes to a whole new level. How do they play it? Well, again, um, I, you know, Kenny's got the speed. I mean, that that's the bottom line. Savachi has to hope to get a good start, maybe chop him off, and see what happens after that. Who gets the whole shot? We're about to go. Brilliant stuff. Someone gets a little ragged in the background, trying to get traction, and someone off the line on the inside. Around they come, oh. and Freezy! Freezy takes the lead! Savachi's down! Oh, I was going to say, Savachi went down, but when he went down, it actually affected Ken Roxon a little bit, so... Well, Kenny's still oh. still in the catbird seat now, because he's further to the front. You've got a little replay, look there. Here. Oh, oh and there's contact! Oh, no! Wow! So... Okay. So, it, it, I mean, the fact of the matter is he leads this race now. That's something for the FIM to worry about if indeed they are going to look into it. So, Freezy leads from Justin Brayton, Gregory Aranda. Well, you yeah, know... Let's, let's get your take on this. You're a rider. Yeah, you know, again, look, you know, Savachi chops off Roxon and then Freezy chops them both off. Um, I don't see the FIM penalising that. Uh, I know people might not like it or, or are not freezy fans but that was not dirty riding it whatsoever let's go to chad i agree 100 percent with uh grant there you know it'd be tough on vince at times but that one that's a tit for tat that's first turn that's a championship on the line savachi goes in rubs rocks and leaves the door open vince freezy comes in and takes advantage yeah and i think kind of a little bit of a call for calm on socials and oh, that stuff i know go. we all get fired up about it but it's a rider who means business and i like that Vince Freezy leads. Now to Kristen. Guys, if you're wondering what kind of feedback Vince Freezy got following Abu Dhabi as Gregory Aranda takes the lead, which is pretty exciting, guys. Vince was told by TA, I don't want you to change how you race. Tony said he needs to be intense here. That's what I want from him. He is doing that at the moment. So Aranda, the team GSM Yamaha rider. Well, seventh like in the points, but look at this here. Roxon on the one gets by Freezy and is up into second place now. Uh, Roxon really doing what he has to do to be a back-to-back -back world champion, making some good spots. So, yeah, I saw Freezy looking down, down the straightaway, and uh, I just got a word in my ear from Chad that it looks like a flat tire. Let's see. Yeah, he's looking oh, down. looking again. Okay. He was like, it is. It is. He's got a rear flat. I, I wonder if that's from the contact. You'd have to you think that, wouldn't you? You would have to draw that conclusion. So, Aranda leads from Roxon. Mitchell Oldenburg now third. He closed in on Vince Freezy, who clearly is worried about yeah. it and continuing to be worried about it. It's an issue. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, watch what? that rear tire when it compresses on the ground. Oh, maybe that's what actually... 
Roxon trying to clear Gregory Aranda. Aranda riding superbly at the moment on that Yamaha. Where is, when you look back, oh, Savachi seven is uh, in 15th place. There it is. Huge for Roxon. This is huge in the title fight. Oh, he mistake. leads the race. Little mistake there from Kenny. He washed out, gives Aranda half a shot. But like you said, Aranda riding fantastic this evening. And this is just falling all in Kenny's place right now as Savachi really struggling to come through the pack from behind. This is a perfect evening. You know, we've talked about how rough it was. If you see the replay, Aranda did make a little mistake. That's it. Salvage as many points as you possibly can. Back we go to Roxon. We revisit the point standings for you once again. It's 172 versus 156. What do you make of this here? Uh, he's just so just beautiful to watch the whips. He is ankles just absorbing the motorcycle right there, getting a little bit on the binders to try and make that inside. Um, maybe not, you know, the, the greatest lap through the whoops ever for him, but Kenny always so good at just being really efficient. Gee, it, this is a beautiful track, but Adam Bailey and the team have come up with something here, the SX Global crew, that really tests the riders. And it's you at home watching that benefit. We're on the way home here for Ken Roxon. Yeah, this is... Uh... This couldn't be any better for Kenny. Look at that, just straight as an arrow down the whoops, still blitzing the top of them. And again, just putting the bike exactly where he wants it. Reminds me a little bit of Anstey in the SX2 class, not putting a foot wrong. About to greet the checkered flag, Roxon. He probably doesn't know what the points are right now, but he's going to get a quick heads up right now. Things didn't go Joey's way. He's going to look up at the big board and realize He's buried, but what can Savachi do? The massive screens here at Marvel will tell him the race results as the, our replay with the candles lit shows you Roxon, and he's done what he kind of did in Birmingham. It's like a book-ended year for him for some reason. Abu Dhabi may not have been great, but he's doing everything he possibly can to retain the one. He takes it out from Gregory Aranda. That's a terrific story. The team GSM Yamaha rider home in second and Mitchell Oldenburg on the Honda continuing that terrific form. Here's the round standings for you. So it's Roxon on top. Highlight underscore that word from Kristen. Exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, well, first turn, it's either lean on or be lean on. And Savachi, I think Chad might have hit the nail on the head. It, the handlebar might have caught Freezy's uh, rear wheel, which might have broken some spokes. And there you see Kenny, Gregory around a little mistake. And then Kenny, a very rare mistake coming to the whoops, a little uh, washout. And uh, again, just beautiful to watch. So on top of WSX, we've got the final for SX2 to come. ride on the one for Shane McElrath. Last race of the season in SX2. The 99 oh. safely on the inside. Anstey will lead them. Trying to make it a three-peat here to wrap up this championship. He's already got it. He's already got his name. Semi engraved on the on that gold medal and he leads this race. Tremendous start. Yeah, exactly what he needed right there. I mean, when it's going your way, it's going your way, right? I've was very interested sorry very interested to see if he was you know going to be very aggressive uh, sometimes for riders once once the pressure's off or there's there's no uh, they're not chasing that carrot um, you lose that drive and it's easy just to be mediocre but right now <laughs> gets a whole shot and he's starting to pull away already you often hear races four and two wheel talk about if you come off that throttle if you change that that rhythm too much once you have achieved something like that it's uh it doesn't always go your way so he's going out there and he's doing everything at the moment that he's done so far tonight max anstey he leads the way from cole thompson wilson todd having a good run to finish the night on the 20 currently third oh and then right behind that luke clout the uh local boy just sneaks around into fourth place just in the background of this battle on the blue number four so the australian had a strong night last night on the 450. Now, tonight in the World Series, steps down to 250. And kind of as I thought, he would probably get more comfortable on the motorcycle as the evening goes on. 
he's starting to put together his best ride so far, and his lap times are proving it. Now, McElrath has picked up a spot, but you know what? You can see it from the uh, the leaderboard on the left there. He's well down the order at the moment, outside the 10 to Kristen. And guys, four of the top five riders currently in this final GP race, raced last night in the finale of the Australian Supercross Championship. So we've talked about whether or not it's an advantage or a disadvantage if they're taxing themselves too much, if they're getting extra track time. But as the results look, it looks as though it might have been an advantage because those guys are having stellar nights tonight. They're enjoying the moment, aren't they? And clearly they are fit because that is hard to back up from a night like that. But there, here we go. This is McElrath and he's trying to eye up a, a spot in the tent at the moment, battling with Maxim Dupre, who was, who's on the, uh, the 141 and was a bit of a star last time out in Abu Dhabi in this class. Yeah, he rode uh, really well there. And we talked about it earlier, Abu Dhabi, you know, a little bit tighter, smaller uh, floor Compact. space. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, think that suits his style better. The big open tracks, you start seeing the riders. I always often say the Americans, but, you know, Anstey's English, but he's ridden a lot in America. So the American-based riders uh, pre prefer this kind of a track. And just um, to you, you know, to... Oh, oh, down, down. That was, uh, I think it was Cullen Park. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Just uh, that turns get really slick. We saw Robson almost lose it. Watch, just lack of tracks. You see the see the shininess. It's slick underneath. There's little there's little marbles on the track, with, you know, meaning like little loose dirt pebbles on top, and it's catching these guys out late in the evening. Anstey with the fastest lap of the race so far, 47.683. He's just banked another 47. He's the only rider in that space, so he is riding like a champion at the moment, doing everything that. Grant was talking before about what would he do? How would he approach it? Well, he is going at this with it wide open. Anstey from Thompson. Wilson Todd in third place. Keeping an eye on Luke Clout on the four who sits in fourth at the moment after that brilliant victory in the final race of the Aussie season last night. Anstey just clicking up the laps. I must say I'm really impressed with his poise and the fact that he's still with nothing to gain just riding clinical as he has all night. The battle is going to come down to the final podium spot. Luke Clout was trying to get on the back of Wilson Todd, but then made multiple mistakes, and that's brought Cullen Park right back in the mix. Nice to see a shot there of Caleb Barham there before, who sits in 10th at the moment, the wild card rider. Good ride by Caleb Barham. An update on the championship points for you, and the final round he has maximized so far. Max Anstey put it beyond doubt, beyond reach. He leads the final race of the 2023 season. Oh, this battle right here still rages on clout now. Gets a good drive, but he's on the outside, but gets it done right there. Beautiful move on Wilson Todd. That's for third place. So game on between these oh. guys here. And look at this. Cullen Park gets in the mix as well on the 67. These boys are scrapping. <laughs> it's, it's the last race of the season. They want to go out with a bang. There might be some banging on bars here pretty shortly. And look at this. Wilson Todd goes back to the inside. And while they're doing it, these two, this helps Luke Clout. It gives him a little bit of breathing space. You can see him just come through there now. So maybe with a second over them as they continue to go at it. And it's also bringing Carson Mumford, Mumford into, yeah. the, into the battle. And he's now pulling up to the rear of these guys. And you can see that shot right there. You get a, you get a, a shot down the straightaway, and you can see a lot of ruts developing on the face of the, tr of the jumps. So the track getting, the track's becoming like the uh, you know the 13th man, as they like to call it sometimes, or the 12th man, making it a little more difficult on these guys. Time lapse running out. Shane McElrath with the one is down in 12th place at the moment. We keep an eye on Wilson Todd on the 20 on the Honda. He sits in fourth place. That fight with Cullen Park on the 67 continues. Then just a little bit further back, Carson Mumford on the 122, who's had a terrific night here so far in Melbourne. Anstey with six seconds over Cole Thompson. What an unbelievable performance by Anstey. Chad? From uh, our good friend Ricky Carmichael, but champions always seem lucky. You create your own luck. And what I loved about watching Max Anstey last night, and then it's coming off uh, tonight as well, is just how prepared he is. He's so on point. He literally looks like he's on a faster motorcycle than anyone else out there. And it's just his roll speed, his preparation of the turn, 
I'm just really, really impressed with the rebuild of Max Anstey and becoming a really solid Supercross rider. I love that. Make your own luck. Yeah. Well, there's another saying, the harder you train, the luckier you get. get. So yeah. I think Anstey's uh, definitely a recipe of that. He's a great ambassador too for this sport in the UK. We're following him because he's on the run home here. The 2023 season, there's the last lap board. One final time this year. He's already in points terms the world champion. He is headed for the podium for the crowning very shortly and he will do it. He will finish it. He will, by the looks of things, see it out with a win. And you know what? Max Anstey hasn't had the easiest road to success. He's had to reinvent himself multiple times. He's been down in the dumps. He's come from Europe. He went to America, went back to Europe, came back, races for an Australian-based team, wins the Australian Championship, and right now about to just seal the biggest deal of his career. This will be life-changing. And very deserving. We had a champion's man. dinner here in Melbourne the other night. Yarif Konski will be almost in tears. Max Anstey has got enough points to do it. He finishes the title winning year on the 99 with victory here in Melbourne. Congratulations, Max Anstey, world champion. That's got a nice ring to it. It definitely does. Just absolute clinical beauty, perfection, whatever you want to call it. And just really impressed. I think fastest lap yeah. of the race to Grant. <laughs> fastest lap of the he gets race. It's a bonus point because you know he, needed, he really needed that point. <laughs> <laughs> but guess, Kristen is down there. We'll get down and soak this up very shortly. But that's a mighty ride. And that's how you go about winning a championship. As Grant said, a period of, of being perhaps in the doldrums, reinvention, has come back stronger. On Friday night, he put his name on an Aussie title. Tonight, a world championship, a medal coming the way of this man from the UK. Just absolute awesomeness. So look at this really good sportsmanship. That's really cool to see. The number one, Shane McGrath, the previous world champion, had a rough night tonight, comes over, what does he do? Congratulate him, awesome job. Let's go to Kristen. Max Anstey, you won the Australian Supercross Championship last night, and tonight you're a world Supercross champion in the SX2 class. What does this title say to all the young riders in the UK with the ambition to someday race Supercross? Oh man, this is unreal for the whole team, for for, for Yuri, for my boss, for Honda, for Firepower Honda, for Marty, for everyone that's behind this program, um, to, to, to make this happen is, is something incredibly special. I've been dreaming to be a world champion for a long, long time. And man, coming out of England, you know, Supercross feels so far away. It's like the stars in the sky. And, and now with Supercross being global, I've got a world title. And, and man, it's, it's incredible. I'm just so proud of my guys and, and the bike and the team. And, you know, I can't give it up to the guys enough. Man, it's been, it's been a fantastic season, and I can't wait to take this momentum into, uh, into next year's Supercross in the US and uh, be back here for, for World Supercross with a number one plate. Tremendous night, and we still have some great stuff to come. Final for WSX, the premier class, but Anstey seals the title with a win in the final race as well. He was already with enough points, but safely in the bag. That's the perfect way to go out. Max Anstey with a dominant performance in the end. 2.16 over the reigning, the outgoing. Shane McElrath with the one on 140, and Luke Clout with 127 there. It's a night to savour here at Marvel Stadium for Max Anstey. He is the new world champion in the SX2 class. The champagne is spraying. Yarif Konski, the team boss, is a little bit emotional. We do it one final time. 12 laps to come in the WSX class. 454 strokes. We're in the starter's hands. Single digit seconds remain. Res rise and we go green. The gates come down for the last time in WSX. What a season. And the 49 of Oldenburg has taken the lead. Those MCR Hondas have just been getting out of the gate phenomenal all night long. But Savachi's back there. So is Roxon too, is he? Well then, we've had a couple go down. Yeah, so the top Suzuki right now is actually Kenny's teammate, Carl Chisholm, on that uh, 
Oh, Max. Lear Motorsports Racing, progressive. But where are our, where's our title contender? Roxon is buried. But where's Savachi? He's looking over his shoulder. Savachi's he's... just in front of him. Just made another pass. So this championship is not over as it right now. We've because... got 12 laps. We've got 12 laps. But it's a bit of a nail biter at present. So Roxon, who's had a superb night so far, is having to gingerly fight his way through the field to pick his marks and to keep moving forward. But if there's one thing Kenny knows, is not to panic. He knows the points. Right now, he actually knows he would still be world champion, even though this would be a dismal result. It's big picture. You want to win. can't win every battle. You want to win the war, though. And he's slicing and dicing, moving forward. But so is Sabachi. He sees it in front of him. Joey is in sixth place at the moment. He's now up into fifth. Kyle Chisholm leads. Dean Wilson is in third place aboard the 15. Good ride by Dean Wilson. Up into the eight now. In eighth place is Roxon. Oldenburg leads the way, I should say, on the 49. Timing update. There he is from Colt Nichols and Kyle Chisholm. This could be teed up to be a really good uh, battle here in the last few laps because Kenny, the fastest man normally on track, is making his way forward, but he's going to have to get around Vince Freezy. And we know Freezy can ride a really wide bike and make it really difficult for these guys to get through. So Ken's going to have to pick his spot and make it clean and get out of there. So to Grant's point, Roxon is still on top of the points by 12. 12 at the moment over Joey Savacci, who's now just moved into fifth place. He gets ahead of Justin Hill. Good work, Joey Savacci. He needed that. Oh, and Freezy now gets up the inside of Hill who almost accidentally makes contact with Roxon as he squares down. That's what Kenny doesn't want. Imagine a foot pick goes through his front wheel and breaks some spokes. That would be what would cost him the title. He just really has to finish in a decent position. He'll be just OK. Oldenburg leads the way aboard the Honda. Dean Wilson is in third place. Savachi is fifth. Roxon moves up one now. He picks up a spot. Gregory Aranda going for the ride too. But Roxon is up into seventh place this race the longest of the evening an extra two laps so they do have a little bit of time but they're still very short intense and fast and i don't know if ken's going to have enough time to make his way to the front but right now he's thinking about overall he wants to win not just the championship but i know he'd love to win the overall and i think if he gets one or two more spots that'll put him in the sweet spot and is, is there an element of just thinking about the right place to do that with freezy where he might yes. be able to find on this melbourne track right oh he thought about it but up front, you see Oldenburg now getting a little bit of pressure from Colt Nichols, who we haven't talked a whole lot about tonight. But Colt Nichols, a great Supercross rider. And, oh, Kenny, Ooh. oh, flirting with the hay bales there. Oh, that was not pretty. And watch Freezy will just shut the door. And again, Ken has to go and try and remount that challenge and figure out where to make it happen. Theory was good, but wasn't able to execute it that time. Back we go to Oldenburg, who's got his hands full. Nichols looking good on that 45 at the moment. We're not quite, we're halfway now. Uh, a little bit behind them, Carl Chisholm has a look over, and yes, he just lets Ken Roxon by, as you would, you would think. Playing the teammate role made it nice and easy. Sorry, that was just off camera right there in the background. You'll see the two Suzuki's coming. Savachi fourth aboard the 17. There's the recap of the rider standings for you. So it's 188 plays 176. But if it finished the way things are right now here at Marble Stadium, Roxon would retain the number one. He would be the 2023 WSX world champion. You know what to really seal the deal and like basically put the exclamation point on is if Ken just passes Joey and takes off. No one could say bad luck, change the championship. Ken just outrode everyone. And it looks like he's going to have a shot at this. Will he Will he force the issue? I mean, maybe deep down he thinks there's a small chance Joey will do whatever it takes to try and eliminate Ken from winning the championship. Here we go. So change of position for the lead. Colt Nichols ahead of Mitchell Oldenburg. So we have a new race leader. There's Dean Wilson holding down third. Back we go to the one of Ken Roxon chasing Joey Savacci. That's going to be interesting. We've got two battles. The battle for the lead and the battle in the background. So the top five now almost in the same frame. So Nichols riding fantastic. Little mistake there from Dean Wilson. And that really hurt him. Dean is 
been good all weekend, but too many little mistakes in, in these races when it really counts. Now, instead of attacking, he's looking over his shoulder and doing a little defending. Coming into the weekend, Vince Breezy was a mathematical chance as well. He's down in eighth place at the moment. We thought he might feature more in this final race than what he is right now. Roxon, as you can see, recap, a revisit of the point standings. Roxon is on course to do it, but we are not there yet. Less than four laps remain in the final one of the season. Roxon can almost, can almost start to think about retaining the number one. Savachi doing everything possible at the moment. We need to give him a bit of kudos. Savachi in fourth. Yeah, th this is going to be a really awkward situation for Kenny. You know the guy you're trying to pass has nothing to lose. And, you know, I'm not saying Mike and Dirty Steve Wilson gets underneath Oldenburg. Look at Roxon. Mega move by Roxon. Two for the price of one gets by Savachi and Dean Wilson. Does he have like a trump card in his pocket that he gets a in two fact, for one every main event? Oh man, it was Oldenburg. Sorry, I thought it was uh, it was Wilson, but such a great move. Watch this, talk us through it. Oh, just, you know, opportunist. Kenny's in the background just watching. So they lose their momentum there. Uh, don't quite see it, but watch. Everyone's trying to figure out where everyone's going. Oh, that was a mistake That's what there. Savachi, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, I hate to say it, he felt the pressure from behind, got on the throttle a little too much, lit it up. Now Dean Wilson's feeling the heat from behind as Ken Roxon now doesn't have to worry about the pressure from behind. He can focus forward, and he knows that Dean Wilson here will always ride clean and fair. He's going to go for it, but laps are dwindling, and I got a feeling Colt Nichols can hold on to this. I wouldn't call it an upset, but just finish the series on a high note and go to the next season with a lot of confidence. Well, you and Chad talked about it earlier tonight. Last couple of races of the year, it's about making a point, making a statement as people look ahead to 2024. Right now, Roxon looks like keeping as he flirts with Again, danger. Same Unbelievable. Spot. Same spot, but that time he clips the tough block. Lucky to get away with that and not get it, you know, caught up in the rear wheel like we saw with yeah. the Rick Ware boys earlier. That could also super derail risky. it. Super risky. But it shows how much he wants it. Back we go to the race leader who has an advantage of 4.3 seconds over Wilson. Wilson's holding down second here, but Roxon is right there. 0.9 behind him on the one. But don't look over your shoulder because Savachi is there, and I'm not saying that he's going to bomb dive him, but if he has a chance, I think he will bomb dive him. So don't take your eye off that. Savachi knows what's on the line. He's got nothing to lose at this point, and he can see the guy that's going to take that title away from him right in front of him. But they, yeah. they come into the white flag, though, out front. Nichols just steady. He's got a gap, but the battle is behind second, third, fourth. Three riders, three different brands, going for it as we see the last lap cards out. So he's on course to do it. Almost there. Well done to Colt Nichols. On the run home here at the Boost Mobile WSX Grand Final at Marvel Stadium. This is the FIM World Supercross Championship final lap of the year. Roxon came into the night trailing by five points over Joey Savacci but it looks like he will defend the crown. He will go back to back in the title race this year. They come down the whoops one final time. Back to our race leader, Nichols. Look at him, yeah, starting to celebrate now, and rightly so. He heads for the checkered flag. Well done to Colt Nichols. He takes it out, but your world champion is Ken Roxon. Wilson will get home in second, Roxon third, but importantly, he's ahead of Savachi. He's defended the crown. He was frustrated to start the night. He swapped to the spare bike. He has done it. Yeah, those team, that team had to pull out all the stops. They were scratching their heads this morning, or even yesterday, through the night to this morning. But what a job they've done. And, and Kenny really just some nice sportsmanship there from Joey Savacci, congratulate him. Colt Nichols with a lovely knack-knack, little tribute to the king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath. And uh, got to be happy for Colt, lovely young man. He's also had a bit of rough go the last year or two in racing, but what a way to finish the evening. Do we want 
We're down in victory lane there. We're going to take you there in just a moment. Podium not too far away either. Unreal. He's done it. That's the way that, I mean, it's been a tenacious fight. He keeps the number one plate. So let's take a little look for you at the final results. Race three, it's Colt Nichols who wins from Dean Wilson and Ken Roxon. They're your top three, but importantly in the title race, Roxon finishes in front of Savachi and ensures that it's his name on the 2023 crown. Kristen. Ken Roxon, your second consecutive World Supercross title, but your first for Dustin Pipes in the PMG group. Do you think maybe in some ways this team, this bike has kick-started a new era in racing for you? I mean, I think so. <laughs> um, we just put in a lot of work, and that ended up paying off. I mean, uh, we had some adversity to fight through uh, today and yesterday, um, having some struggles, but you know, when it comes down to it and we go racing, we just, uh, we give it everything we have, and tonight it was enough for a championship. Ken, a rider who has never given up, not in his career and not in this championship fight, guys. Tremendous stuff. What an unreal evening we have had here at Marvel Stadium. Championships that have, from a storyline perspective, uh, such difference between SX2 and, and this. So here we go, a recap of the riders' points in WSX. Ken Roxon takes it, keeps the one from Joey Savacci. You've got to feel for Joey in, in some ways. Um, came in off the back of, uh, of Abu Dhabi at the top of the points, and it would have meant so much to him to do it. So commiserations, Joey. Dean Wilson wraps up the year, an Aussie title last night, and a top three to finish things here in the world standings. Unreal. It's been around with, as we said before, some amazing storylines. In the end, Ken Roxon defends the crown. Going to be a huge party in a city that enjoys and has some great places to party as well. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Good spot to wrap it up, right? Well, we hope you've enjoyed it. It's been an amazing season, this. We wish Adam Bailey and all the team all the very best for 2024 in the World Supercross Championship. The titles have been decided tonight in a very memorable night here in Melbourne. It's been great to have Ricky Johnson along the way with us. Chad Reed, an awesome performance trackside, along with Kristen B. To my buddy Grant Langston and all of our TV team, that wraps it up for 2023. We hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.